Now, too many boats chasing too few fish. That is the stock phrase when it comes to talking about the challenges of managing a fisheries policy for Europe. It's not a policy that has earned the EU many brownie points over the years. Fishermen don't like it and complain it's been the ruin of them and many coastal communities. Environmentalists say stocks have dwindled while the EU has given in to pressure from member states and taken less radical action. And that's not to mention the policy of discards, throwing fish back into the sea because the catch is over quota. Well, armed with its new powers under the Lisbon Treaty here at the European Parliament, they've begun work with the other institutions to reform the policy. It's going to be a huge task. And that was made even more clear recently with the publication of a special report from the Court of Auditors on the EU's fisheries policy and whether it actually works. The auditors look at how the EU spends its money. In this case, they didn't have anything very good to say. Even the contents page of the report is damning. It talks about an unclear framework, inadequate definitions, increasingly irrelevant limits, inadequate rules and poor design and implementation of policy. The auditors describe significant delays, weak plans and inadequate reporting by member states. And the report concludes starkly current measures have failed. I'm joined now by three British MEPs, all of whom have been uh, very vocal on this issue of reform of the common fisheries policy. Uh, Chris Davis, British Liberal Democrat, who will be preparing the report for the Environment Committee on reform of the fisheries policy. Marta Andreasen from the UK Independence Party. You sit on the Budgetary Control Committee and you're working on the response of the Parliament to this Court of Auditors report. Struan Stevenson, uh, British Conservative, you were the President of the Fisheries Committee, now you're the Vice President. And that, of course, will be the committee, the lead committee um, on this important work. And you now have new powers as MEPs. How do you think you should use them, given the kind of really damning uh, verdict from the Court of Auditors? Is it worth actually trying to reform this at all? Why not just scrap the whole thing? Well, I'd love to scrap the whole thing, but, I mean, we have to argue from the position of reality. We're not going to be able to get out of the common fisheries policy unless we get out of Europe altogether. I'm sure Marta and others would want to do that. Let's look at what is possible and what's possible right now I think is real meaningful regionalization, taking away the micromanagement from Brussels, giving those powers for day-to-day -day management of fisheries back to the fishermen themselves, back to the member states. Marta, do you think there is a reform that can be done in this area? Well, I spoke to the auditors about the report. And other than the main issues that they reveal, that we have wasted 1.7 billion in decommissioning vessels without any result. And That's money to scrap vessels, essentially. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, but without any result. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 100,000 jobs we have lost. What they told me is that they see the Commission has failed in many instances to monitor and control how this policy was being implemented. Mm -hmm. And they don't see that the reform of the fisheries policy is going to actually reform the way the Commission controls and monitors. Yeah. And this is the big failure. The Commissioner, the Commission has failed here. And uh, the reform of the policy is not actually going to do anything about this. I think we need to return these powers to the member states and there can be regional agreements among different member states without the intervention of the Commission. We should point out you were the EU's chief accountant once so you have a certain perspective on this uh, Absolutely. although you were sacked for whistleblowing but Chris I mean, do you agree uh, with Marta that the problem no. is the monitoring? No, we have Funnily not. enough. I don't think it's the Commission's fault. Of course the Commission should be ultimately the, in charge of, of doing these things but it is the member state, it is the governments of each of the countries which is primarily responsible for ensuring that the money is properly spent. The Commissioner could not be more clear. I want an end to, the, to these payments. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, what we're finding out is that although she is arguing all the time, and everyone accepts we have too many fishing boats in Europe chasing too few fish, we are overfishing, mm -hmm. we have to have less, less boats. She wants to say, the, 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 as Marta quite rightly says, the auditors point out the money used for scrapping boats has not been used properly. Well, but but, but, the, but, but the, gov the governments, uh, we, we find out behind the scenes, are arguing, no, 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 we want well, to carry on in the same is, way. It is the role of the Commission to stop the payments when well, they see they are not getting the result they, they, they use. And, that's, no, and that is what the Commission help. is proposing. No, well, we it's understand not. that the, not the French uh, and many other member states are demanding that money be reintroduced to build new vessels 
to modernise the existing fleet, even to provide new engines. And of course they use the excuse, we want them to be uh, low carbon emission engines, we want them to be you know, uh, low fuel uh, utilisation engines, but in fact that will give them more power to catch more fish, and that's the opposite sure. direction uh, from what we want. The same with, uh, with all other policies. It, the taxpayer puts the money in the hands of the Commission. It is the Commission that has to see that this money is properly spent. It is the governments which is get standing in the way. Just the whole fishing industry is, is unprofitable in Europe. It is being kept alive by artificial subsidies. And exactly. that, dis that distorts the market. We need to stop the subsidies. The Commission would agree on this. But it and, was and, the and, Commission and, 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 and who we, put and, in the subsidies. It and, was the Commission who put in the quotas. Well, now they're talking and about they're taking talking them away, though. Burning the yes. discard. But let's, get, let's move on because, OK, the governments are the ones that are, or some of the governments anyway, are the ones standing in the way. You now, as MEPs, have an yeah. equal role. How is that going to play out? Because you've got uh, French, Spanish, uh, Portuguese uh, you know, MEPs here too who have interests. We don't know. I think it's a knife edge. Um, it's, in the Fisheries Committee, it's very balanced between those people who really want significant reform and those people who would like to keep it to an absolute minimum and carry on in the same old bad way. Mm -hmm. What's your prediction, Struan? I think we will win this argument because I think people are fed up. You know, in Britain, we have seen 60% of our whitefish fleet scrapped. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the point in us trying to meet these uh, tough guidelines on scrapping and then allowing money to be spent building new vessels across the Channel in France mm -hmm. and probably in Spain? There is no question that that should not be allowed, and I think we'll win that fight. Well, that's all from me and my guests here at the European Parliament. We'll be back again next week. Hope you join us then. But for now...